Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Howie Hack, and I'm one of the developers here at PTS. Today, I'll be uh, doing a uh, webinar on Clearstream RFID and doing check-in, check check-out with fixed RFID. So I'm going to do a live demonstration today of setting up Clearstream RFID to uh, perform check-in, check-out of items th from a stock room and show you how quickly and easily you can get up and running with that uh, installation. <clears throat> and then I'm going to be actually moving a cart uh, past the readers or the antennas to actually show you the check-in, check-out process. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any video cameras set up, or fortunate for you guys, but I don't have any video cameras set up for myself over here that would allow you to see the cart moving back and forth. But at that point, I'll kind of describe to you what I'm doing as I'm going through uh, in and out of the stock room and describe to you exactly what I'm doing. And you'll see the data on the database side updating to reflect uh, the movement of those items. Uh, before I get started today, as always, we'll, we will be having a question and answer period at the end of the webinar today. So if you guys have any questions as I'm going through the demonstration, uh, please send them over in your GoToMeeting question panel. Uh, if you have uh, any questions afterwards and you'd like to uh, get a response from us, we uh, will have our contact information up at the end of the webinar. So please reach out to us with any feedback or questions you may have after the uh, webinar today. <coughs> Uh, with that, uh, I would like to mention that all of the um, stuff I show you today is available for free trial on our clearstreamrfid.com website. So if you'd like to take a look at the software and actually set everything up as I do today to perform a uh, check-in, check-out with fixed RFID reader, please go to clearstreamrfid.com, click on the Take a Trial link up at the top there, and download the, the software. And it's, it's all free trial, so you can get up and running with everything I show you here today. The trial only limits the amount of time you can keep the readers running uh, in, uh, in demo mode. So uh, I would encourage everyone, if they want to trial everything, go ahead to our website there to take the free download, run through the quick installer, and uh, set everything up as I do today or for whatever type of uh, application you're trying to set up with fixed RFID. So uh, before I get started with the demonstration, just a little bit of uh, really quickly what Clearstream RFID is. Clearstream RFID is a simple to use configuration tool that allows you to uh, hook up fixed RFID readers, as many as you'd like, to a pre-existing database table, uh, Excel spreadsheet, or text file. And through a simple uh, interface, you can hook up all of your readers in your environment to that uh, destination of your choosing. Uh, there's no programming involved, so it's just point and click. Uh, you're just really marrying up the field of information from the reader to the fields in your database table, Excel spreadsheet, or text file. I'll be going through that today because I'm going to actually go from scratch and setting up the check-in, check-out process. And you can kind of see how you would hook up a fixed RFID reader to a uh, pre-existing ODBC data source, uh, again, text file or Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay. So what did we want to talk about today? So a little bit about uh, typical check-in and check-out and how fixed RFID can help this. A typical check-in, check-out process would take something maybe from a stock room or some location that you really want to track the movement of items in and out of that location so that uh, the people that need to know what's in there can see it uh, and know that there's extra stock involved um, or maybe they're looking for a particular item that's quite important for what they're doing at that particular time. They would go back and see what's available in their stock room and go ahead and grab it. Um, the two typical ways of doing this are either paper documents or uh, barcode scanning, and in some cases here even mobile RFID scanning. Uh, but the two most common are paper as well as barcode scanning. So you'd go into the stock room or a worker would go into the stock room, they'd grab something, they'd sign that uh, item out of the inventory of that stock room so that later on somebody can process that maybe into a back-end system so that you get the most up-to-date information. Or maybe they type it out in a uh, some type of terminal uh, for what they're checking out. Uh, for barcode scanning, it's slightly less uh, manual entry. You um, would go ahead and grab a barcode scanner, scan the piece of equipment you're checking out of that stock, and then sync that data back over to some uh, database or you know maybe an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, that the, the inventory is being kept for that stock room. <clears throat> now the important thing to note there is both in both cases, uh, there has to obviously be somebody that does performs the action. So when you check an item out of the stock room, they're uh, filling out some paper, or maybe it's again a terminal like um, type form that they're filling out. But they have to go out and fill out that information. They have to fill it out correctly. Uh, and they have to do it for every item that's being pulled out of that stock room. Same thing with a barcode scanner. Barcode scanner makes it easier that you only have to pull the trigger to scan an item. But uh, when you scan the item, 
you still have to grab that barcode scanner. You still have to scan the correct item. You have to scan all of the items you're taking out of that uh, location. And then you have to go ahead and, in most cases, sync the data that's been collected with that barcode reader back over to uh, the uh, destination where you want that data located so that the people that want to see that inventory can look at it and see what's in the location if they need to reorder things, uh, if they need some piece of equipment that may not be there that they see as being there. Um, so there's a lot of problems with that. The, once the uh, inventory becomes unreliable, then you're using man hours to search for that item or uh, stopping production of something maybe because you don't have the equipment available in that stock room to continue the production. Um, so there's a lot of extra costs associated with, with losing those items um, and requiring people also to scan the item that they're moving them in and out of that stock room. So maybe it's a very highly used stock room. There's a lot of items going in and out of there. You're going to be scanning every single one and making sure that data is being synchronized back to the database and updated in the correct way so that everyone that needs to know that that's uh, about that stock can take a look at it. So there's a lot of areas for error there. And on top of those errors happening, then there's the uh, requirement to go find the items or just uh, uh, increase the stock in that location if you have to order new items. Um, so what fixed RFID solves with this whole process <clears throat> is not requiring any intervention by a user to scan the items. It's, the items are passively scanned. So from the um, graphic here, you can see that all of the items going in and out of this room, they have uh, fixed RFID or tags on them. Those tags are scanned automatically by the readers at the doorway to that stock room. So no longer does a user have to grab a barcode scanner. No longer do they have to fill out some uh, form or document that says they are checking this item out. And then later on, maybe they have to do the same thing to check it back in. There's a two-stage process there that they could um, not perform. With the fixed RFID, those items are just scanned every time they're moved in and out of that location automatically and passively so that there's no user intervention. And all of that data is immediately sent to the destination of where the um, people that are reporting on this data can uh, see it. So if an item is checked out, it's immediately sent back to the database in real time. So no longer do you have to sync a barcode scanner. No longer do you have to take some type of paper document and uh, enter it into some system. It is just passively scanning the tags that move in and out of that stock room and then sending that information directly to the database. So it's all, all up to date in real time um, with no user intervention. It's just basically flipping a switch in the database uh, to indicate um, the status of that item. So no longer do you have, it just because if somebody forgot to check something back in or out, no longer are you going to look for that item. You can actually just look in the database and get a more reliable view of the stock in that location and what should be there and what, what has been checked out. Okay. So the next slide I have here is actually a picture of some testing that we have been doing in the office here and basically what I have set up today to show you this check-in, check-out process. <clears throat> now here is our sample stock room. It's this doorway here on the left-hand side. There are some uh, fixed RFID antennas attached to the wall here. And the way the check-in, check-out process works with Clearstream is <clears throat> the antenna that last read the tag is marking that tag in the database with that information. So in my case here, you can see I have two sets of antennas close to the doorway, two sets of antennas further from the doorway. And as the items on, these car as the items on this cart goes past this portal, they're being scanned by those antennas. So if you're going into the stock room, these, uh, this set of antennas here, the ones closest to the doorway, are reading those tags last and marking them in the database as having been checked in. In reverse, as an item on this cart comes out and goes down the hallway, they're being read by this set of antennas here, and then they're being marked in the database automatically as having been checked out. So it's based on the antennas that read the tag. They're, being, they're marking the database with that update uh, of being checked in or checked out along with the date timestamp and maybe even a location of, say, if this is one of many stock rooms, um, you can update it with that information as well. And you can see I have a bunch of assets on this cart here that are all tagged with RFID tags. And they're just kind of thrown on this cart. And I can move back and forth in, in and out of this stock room to actually perform the uh, check-in, check-out process. 
And you can see from this, there's no user intervention. It's, these items are just going past the face of these antennas, and they're being reported to the database with the correct status for what they for the last antenna that had read them, being whether or not they were checked in or checked out as they're rolling away from the stock room. Okay. The next thing I thought I'd do is hop out of the PowerPoint and actually go ahead and configure this within Clearstream, so you can see how easy it is to set up a check-in, check-out process with Clearstream and actually have it mark and update your database. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hop out of the PowerPoint. <coughs> now here, let me just check if anyone has any. Uh, so here is Clearstream RFID, and this is the home screen of the application. This is what you're presented with when you first open up Clearstream after you install the software. So if you go to our website, download the free trial, and run the installation, you will see this screen here. Now what you do when configuring Clearstream is you're hooking up a fixed RFID reader here on the source, so the source tab, to a destination of where you'd like that tag information to go as it's read by the reader you have on the left-hand side. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and select the destination where I want my tag information to go. And I'm going to use the Clearstream RFID sample database that's provided with the installation. So again, if you guys wanted to try exactly what I'm doing here today, you can set this up exactly as I have it, and you can see the same results uh, with everything that's provided with the installation of Clearstream. So for the destination, I'm going to go ahead and change the type. And here's where you're selecting between an ODBC database, like Microsoft Access, SQL Server, Oracle. Uh, something like that, or an Excel spreadsheet or a text file. If you pick uh, an Excel spreadsheet, you're presented with a uh, selector for the Excel workbook and then the sheet you'd like to send the tags to. Same thing with a text file, it's, uh, the file path and the text file name. But for the demo today, I'm going to select ODBC. When you select ODBC, you are presented with the uh, list of databases that are on your PC for installation. For everyone, if they uh, trial Clearstream, you will see this Clearstream RFID sample option here. So if you go ahead and select that, it has a pre-configured table for RFID that we already have configured with the installation. So that's the one I'm going to select for uh, today to actually do the demo. So I'm going to pick RFID tag list. The last thing I want to do in this table is instead of posting a new tag every time it's read by the reader, I want to update the uh, tag in this RFID tag list. So I'm going to, in the options tab, I'm going to switch it to be update existing and append if not found. And I'm going to base that on the EPC value in that database. So this means every time my fixed RFID reader, which I'm going to configure in a second over here, sends a tag to this RFID tag list database table, instead of just posting it to the table, it's going to try to update an existing row in the database based on the EPC value or the, the tag ID memory bank of the tag. So if tag 123 walks by the antenna, it's going to send that over to the uh, database table here, and it's going to report that tag 123 has been read by the fixed RFID reader here on the left-hand side that we're about to configure. So this is how you would update a row in the database. And the reason that's important for check-in, check-out is rather than just posting new tag 123 a whole bunch of times to the database, I want to update it with the most recent information. So I have tag 123 in the database only once. When it's checked out, I want to mark it as checked out. When it's checked in, I'm going to mark that same row in the database with checked in. Um, so just to show you that, I have this destination selected. If I go over to the destination tab here, or the data viewer, here is my current RFID tag list. And you can see I have a bunch of items in my tag list already. And they're at various stages of being checked in or checked out. So these are the items that I have in my database table. So if you guys already had a database table of items and you wanted to hook it up to this system, you could do that as well. I'm using this Clearstream RFID tag list. And these are the tags that I have in my environment that I'm currently going to mark with checked in or checked out. Okay. So that's my destination. That's where all the tags are being sent every time they're read by the reader. Um, on the left-hand side is where I need to configure the reader that's sending the tags to this destination. So I'm going to go ahead and select from the type dropdown, I'm going to select the RFID option. When I do that, I just need to add the RFID reader that I'm currently using in my environment. And to do that, I'm going to click the readers button. I'm going to click add when that pops up. And I'm going to select the make of the reader that I'm currently using. These are all the types that we support, Motorola, Intermec, and Pinge, Alien. 
Sing Magic and so on. There's also an LLRP. This, if you don't see your manufacturer in this list here, try LLRP. It's kind of a standard protocol for connecting to readers. But I'm going to go ahead and select Motorola. When you do that, you'll see one reader added to your list. Now, you would do this for every fixed RFID reader you wanted to hook up in your environment. Maybe you had three readers, one for each stock room. You would hit this add three times and then configure each one of those readers. So for my uh, demo today, I'm going to go ahead and call this reader stock room one, stock room one reader, OK, because this is my reader that I have hooked up at that stock room you saw in the PowerPoint there. Um, the next thing I need to do is enter the IP address or host name of that reader. Now, all of the fixed readers hook up to your network uh, via um, an Ethernet connection. So they'll be assigned an IP address, or you can assign them statically. If you don't know the IP address of your reader, we provide a find feature. So if you want to just click find, it'll actually search across your network for the fixed RFID readers that are connected and allow you to configure it that way. I happen to know the IP address of my reader, so I'm going to go ahead and enter it here. When you enter the IP address or the host name and it connects successfully, you will see the reader ID populate in this reader field here. So that means we, connect, we successfully connected to this reader. And if I were to just hit close on this reader dialog, you can see now I have a, fix, a fixed RFID reader here, my Stockroom Reader 1, Stockroom 1 reader, hooked up to this RFID tag list table. So basically right now if I were to start this reader, it's going to send all of the tags that it reads to the uh, destination over here on the right-hand side. Um, so this, in a very basic form, you could go ahead and set it up, and it will uh, currently start syncing tags every time they're read by this reader to the destination. But there's a couple uh, extra steps I want to take now just to do the check-in, check-out process. So I'm going to go back to my reader dialog. I'm going to make sure I have my reader selected here. Now down below, underneath the, uh, the reader list, this is where you're configuring all of the attributes of the reader. So you're controlling when it's, it's scanning for tags. Maybe it's a continuous scan. It's always scanning for tags. Maybe you want to hook up a light sensor, a motion detector to the reader. You can turn it on to be uh, triggered by a general purpose input trigger. So maybe the light sensor will trip it on, and you can turn the reader on for some number of seconds, and then it'll shut off. Um, but this is where you're configuring all of the settings for the readers. I won't go into all the settings today for uh, our check-in, check-out. But just to uh, note, again, this is where you're configuring the reader, your antennas that are hooked up to the reader. You can power up general purpose output ports, so you can power up lights and buzzers. So if tags aren't, are scanned by a reader that aren't supposed to, you can uh, power up a buzzer so people are notified. And then there's also some manufacturer-specific uh, settings that on this last tab here, uh, which Motorola has some in this list. And I'm going to go ahead and actually turn off this um, event reporting for the demo today. But to do the uh, check-in, check-out process, the only thing I need to do is actually name my antennas. Now, like you saw from the PowerPoint, let me just bring it back over here, I have four antennas hooked up to my reader. So I have uh, two right here next to the stock room, two further away from the stock room. And they're capturing the direction of this cart based on the last antenna that read that tag. So I'm going to go ahead now and configure these. <clears throat> now, I have... Um, antennas one and two hooked up to these right here. So these are my checked out antennas. And those are hooked up to antennas one and two on my reader. Antennas three and four are right here next to the doorway. Those are the checked in uh, antennas. So I'm going to hop back out of the PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and configure my antenna. So I need to add four antennas because I have those four hooked up to this reader. And now I just need to give the antennas a name. Uh, for antennas one and two, since those are the checked out antennas, I'm going to go ahead and call them checked out. I'll do that for one and two. For three and four, those are the ones closer to the doorway. I'm going to go ahead and call those checked in. Okay. I'm going to leave the power level up at the max. The max here is 30 dB. I'm going to leave that at the max. The tag sessions I won't get into today, you can leave those at the default. That should be fine. Um, but now you can see what, what's happened here. I've configured four antennas to be hooked up to this reader. Every time a tag is scanned by, a, uh, by the reader, it reports which antenna read the tag. So if this tag here on my cart went past 
the top antenna on the right hand side here, that whatever the name of that antenna is, it's recorded into the, the database table with that value. So by naming the antennas, we're able to determine the direction of the item based on which antenna last scanned it. So as it's walking past the face of these two sets of antennas, it's recording to us in our database which direction it went based on that last uh, antenna read. Okay, so that's pretty much all I need to do for my uh, uh, reader. I'm going to leave it in continuous scan mode because I'll just walk back and forth in front of these readers so you can see the state change. <clears throat> um, the la there is one more thing I want to do. You guys don't have to do this for testing, but I'm going to limit the tags that are being read in my environment um, down to a certain number of tags that have a prefix that uh, I have set here. So this will allow me to not read all of the tags that we have here in our offices and only the ones that I'm intending to use on the cart as they go back and forth. So I have two sets of tags with different prefixes. So what I'm doing here is basically only sends the tags that this reader here, Stockroom 1 reader, reads that start with E28011 and 6780. Okay, so only tags that match this criteria will be sent to the destination, and you'll see that in the database as well. That's what I have here. They either start with the 6780 or the E28011. Okay, so that's all I need to configure. I'm going to go ahead and save my project. Just call it webinar. Um, 24 for today's date. Um, so now that's all I have con uh, to configure for this. I'm going to go ahead, uh, just save to my project. I'm going to go jump over to the start stop form, and I'm actually going to power up this uh, reader by hitting the start selected. Okay. So now I'm going to walk away from my desk here, so I will not be standing in front of this desk, and I'm going to go ahead and over to our cart, just like the one you saw in that picture. And when I go past the face of these antennas, you're going to see the state changed, change from uh, a bunch of these from checked out to checked in. Because I'm going to take that cart from the outside of that stock room now and move it to the inside of the stock room. So I have another PC set up over by this um, portal here that I'm sharing the screen on. So I'm going to go ahead and get the cart. And as I take this cart, I wish you guys could all see this, I'm going to roll it past the face of these antennas. And when that happens, Clearstream is actually uh, recording the activity of these tags being scanned. And you can see now that all the tags that went past the face of that reader have now been uh, marked with the status of checked in and minus the two that are actually checked out. So this one here actually, I'm going to go ahead and grab that tag because I have that one set away. This one here is that 678 ends in 2001. I'm going to go ahead and grab that tag and walk it past the face of the antenna. And you can see that that single uh, tag, even if it's not on the cart and goes past the, the uh, face of the antennas at a, a different time, it will go ahead and mark in the database with the appropriate information. So right now it is checked out. I'm going to go ahead and walk this past the uh, antennas. I'm going to put it into the stock room. If I come back over to our uh, database, you can see now it has been marked with the checked in status. That was that single antenna. Now I'm going to actually take the cart again and I'm going to walk the cart back and check all the items out on that cart back out of the, the stock room. So I'm going to kind of walk it back through the space here. I wish you guys could see the actual process here, but I'm just walking down the hallway out of that stock room, going past the face of the antennas. I'm walking back to the PC here so I can refresh this. And you should see all the assets that were on the cart have been marked with the checked out state uh, in our database here. So you can see that marked as checked out now. Okay. You can also see the activity in our activity monitor. Um, and at any point, you can go ahead and stop it. But let me walk back into over to my desk here. Okay, so that's the basic process for setting up a check-in, check-out uh, application with Clearstream RFID. You can see it's a basic process of hooking up a reader to some destination where you'd like the tag information to go, and then um, <clears throat> making sure that you're naming the antennas appropriately based on where they are next to uh, a stock room or you know wherever you're, you want your antennae to mark these uh, 
items with a checked in, checked out status. Now again, all of you uh, can set up the demo today. I do apologize for my little mess up here with the uh, or filtering, but I only wanted to read these two types of tags in the environment just so it didn't build a bigger database based on all the tags that we have in our environment here. Um, so I forgot to put the or uh, type as opposed to and, but you can see, you can set this all up on your own with Clearstream RFID. <clears throat> Again, you only really need to hook up the fixed RFID reader here and name the antennas based on where they are next to that stock room or portal or wherever you're ch uh, marking these items as having been checked in or out. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you guys today. I will jump back over to the PowerPoint for any other questions that you guys may have. Uh, please feel free to use the question panel. And as always, um, if I don't get to your question today or if you think of anything as you're trialing the software on your uh, side, uh, please reach out to us. I will have our contact information up in just a second. So bear with me. It looks like we have some questions coming up here. So let me open up the question panel. Oh, it looks like someone caught me here. <laughs> I have a question here. I wish I was next to my PC. Well, he said, did you use and instead of or in the prefix? That was from Jay. I appreciate that. I'm sorry I wasn't next to my um, PC, but that was a good catch, actually, watching me miss that uh, filter type. Okay, I have a question here about is there a way to know who took the items out? Uh, as opposed to, from my sample here, you see that it's just the items that go out uh, at the time of uh, scanning. You don't really know who took it out, it's only those items. There's a couple of ways you can do that, uh, although the items aren't necessarily marked immediately with that badge um, or that employee's information. Um, what you can do in Clearstream is that you can actually send a single reader's um, tag information to multiple destinations. I only hooked up the Stockroom one reader to a single destination, so every time a tag is read it goes to this destination. What you can do to, to uh, simulate what you're asking there, to mark who took the items out, you can add an additional uh, process that sends the fixed RFID reader's dest uh, tags to a different destination, maybe a badge scanning table, um, maybe just some other place that you're capturing what time an employee went through that portal. Uh, so here, let me select this five field sample. And I have, you can see from these two processes, I have the first one, um, let's call it capture items. And let's say this one capture badges. Now, in both of these situations, I have the same stockroom one reader on the left hand side and I have different destinations. So every time this reader reads text, it's sending them to both locations. What you can do is, you can assign RFID tags to the badges, to the employees that are checking these things out that maybe start with a prefix um, like we did for the other one. So if we do, maybe let's say they start with a B. Let's say those uh, tags that are given to the employees start with a B. So what this reader is now doing is it's capturing the items that are being scanned and sending them to this RFID tag list table. It's also at the same time capturing the badges uh, that are being read and sending them to this five field sample in this case. And then what you can do is correlate the time between when that employee went through the portal and the items that are being scanned at the exact same time because that badge would be scanned along with the items that are going through the portal. Um, that's one current way you can do it. We have been talking about some additional features in Clearstream where um, when a badge tag is scanned, it would actually power up the reader to full power and then records all the items scanned and every time an item is scanned and sent to the destination, it's recorded with that same badge that had started the read. So that's another actually feature that we're looking at incorporating into Clearstream uh, and would handle that in another way. It would uh, Basically, the badge would be the thing that's tripping the read and then all of the items that are being scanned during that time frame would be sent with that badge ID and not just the item. Um, I have a question here. It uh, looks like an issue that someone had is running in. Uh, it says the same thing. I have been having problems with the reader is true but not logged in. One thing that could be um, is that the 
Reader can be powered up and reading tags, but it doesn't get set to the logged in state here until tag information has been posted successfully to the database. So if for some reason the database um, doesn't get updated with any information, even though this says true, the reader status will still say uh, not logged in or stopped until a tag is successfully posted. So you will want to make sure that you didn't do something like I did here, where I filtered all of the tags out of the reader so that nothing ever got sent to the destination. Um, so take a look at something like that. Um, or if there's some type of database rule you're breaking. Maybe you're trying to send the EPC value on the tag to a primary key in the database. If you read a second tag, it's going to fail, uh, and it won't post it to the database, and in which case this reader status won't successfully change because it has never posted a tag to the database. I looks like I got a follow quote. Don't you need a tag in... Uh, in front of the antennas to get it to connect. Yeah, you need a, you need to successfully read a tag uh, and then have it post to the database to get this reader status to change. Okay, I have a question here about how do you clear the database? Um, the database is this uh, data viewer that I showed you guys here. This is really just a view into the database that you're connecting to as your destination. This is actually a Microsoft Access uh, database table that is provided with the installer, and it's in the PTS ClearStream RFID3 data folder, and it's this Access database. If I were to open this Access database and go to the RFID tag list, you're going to see the same information that's presented in this ClearStream RFID data viewer. Um, so to clear the database, you really usually go to the database itself and clear the records out. So if you needed to delete everything here, you could go ahead and just, in Microsoft Access's case, highlight it all and just hit delete. And then it will clear this database um, with all of the information. Uh, there is one mode in ClearStream where you can delete items as they're being sent to the destination. So if you change it to delete existing, you could have every time a tag that match that's read by the reader matches something in the database, it'll actually delete that row from the database. I don't know if that was kind of what you were asking. Okay, I have a question here. Just what uh, wondering what type, what brand of the antennas were used in the demonstration? Uh, I believe they were Time Seven um, antennas. Uh, they're not. They, there are not Motorola or Zebra antennas that match the reader I was using today, but I believe they're times seven. Uh, question here. Uh, another person that couldn't attend uh, the webinar, will this be saved on YouTube? Yep, well, it's currently being recorded. So um, you guys can all refer back to this video. We'll probably edit out my um, and or mess up, but we'll uh, post this to YouTube if you want to review it later on. Uh, and also, if you had, if you want to do set everything up and refer back to this to do the setup on your own, uh, it will be posted to our website. It should be our ClearStream uh, YouTube channel or the webinars page on ClearStreamRFID.com. I have another question here, actually, on um, a person that would like the model and type of an antenna. Um, that we were using here. Yeah, I can uh, send that out to anyone requesting that information. Again, I believe it's a time seven antenna. I could be wrong, uh, but I will get that information and send it out. I'm, uh, asking these questions here are recorded as well, so I can refer back to them um, and send that out to you. Uh, here's a follow up to actually someone's suggestion on the check in check out process said you could assign a cart to an employee and have a, an RFID tag on the cart. Yeah, you could do something like that as well. It almost rather than having the badge that the employee holds, you would have put the badge on the cart and then that cart would be maybe to a particular employee or something like that. That would work as well. It's a good option. Um, and then you could on top of that use the filtering to send the tags to the correct location. Uh, question here, is there integration that has been developed for accounting systems such as SAGE or QuickBooks? Um, the destination options that we currently provide in ClearStream 
are ODBC, Excel, and text file. Um, I believe in Sage or QuickBooks, you could do a text file uh, integration where you could be writing the tag information that's being scanned by the readers to a text file on the destination, import that into uh, Sage or Clear, uh, QuickBooks. We don't have a direct integration into either of those platforms, but you could, and I know people have done this, especially with Sage, um, have just a process that runs that every once in a while that sees that text file sitting there and then imports that data directly into those systems. I'm not, not too familiar on Quick, the QuickBooks side, but I know Sage has uh, something like that available. Or I've seen customers that have done that, um, but we don't have a direct integration. We do have, we do custom web services integration, so if anyone had a web service they'd like to send the tag information to, we could definitely take a look at that if you wanted to, um, if you had a web service that you'd like to send the tag information to. Uh, but out of the box, Clearstream, we support ODBC, which is really any database that where an ODBC driver is available, uh, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL. Um, you could connect to those, Excel or text files. We have a question here. If this RFID, if the RFIDs are within two inches apart, this type of antenna can read in a fast manner. Yeah, I mean, the tags can basically be up against each other. It might affect the read range a little bit if they're uh, packed tightly. I mean, we have customers that have the tags packed very tightly and they can scan hundreds, um, thousands, hundreds sometimes in a couple of seconds, thousands in a minute or so. Um, so you can read these tags very quickly. In my scenario here, I had some smaller number on that cart, maybe somewhere between seven and 10 tags on the cart. Uh, and it will read all of those almost immediately. You could uh, fairly, uh, densely pack that car and still read that number of ta uh, you know the number of tags very relatively quickly. Okay, I have a question here. Since RF waves cannot be controlled, how can you avoid reading one tag with the end that is far away from the check-in point and consider that event as a check-out event? Um, this is something that you'll always run into with um, RFID. RFID waves, they'll bounce around. If you have a lot of metal in the environment, they will, it will definitely bounce around a lot. It will also limit the read range, in some cases, of your tags. So you do want to take into consideration the placement of antennas and how the items are moving past that portal. You can see from my setup here, I had those antennas fairly uh, far apart, <clears throat> so that you're not very likely to get a bounce from that tag back to the other set of um, antennas even though you're on the far side of the uh, set of antennas that are further away. Now, that's not guaranteed. You may get a read that bounces around enough to get back to that first set of antennas, and it's not the one you're intending to read. You can do some tag uh, uh, read um, signal strength filtering. So what I showed you guys today was an, the tag ID or EPC memory bank filtering, basically a prefix of that tag are the only tags I want to read. You can also, uh, the reader captures the peak uh, return signal strength indicator um, back during the tag read. So you can limit the number of, or the signal strength that you want for each read. So I could also add a filter here that says if the peak RSSI is less than some value, I'm sorry, I want to do this in reverse, is greater than some value, that's the only time I want to send this tag to uh, to my database. So if it's ever lower than this, it won't um, report it to the destination. So you can add a signal strength filter to your source so that those very faint RFID tags won't be reported to the destination. Um, you can see these values and try to come up with an appropriate value if you jump over to the data viewer and take a look here at this peak RSSI. This is the value that's recorded. Um, so if you get a bounce, for something that's lower than this, you can go ahead and um, filter those out so that you're not recording it. So you can limit that uh, a bit. Uh, you will always get um, the RF waves bouncing around the room, but if you do some filtering and make sure you uh, control the orientation of the antennas and things, you can greatly limit the, the problems with those uh, with bad reads like that.
We have a question here about how many feet away can the cart be with the parts. Um, this is a, another tough question uh, when it comes to RFID. In our case here, this hallway, that hallway that you saw in the picture, six feet wide. I can move those carts on the other side of the hallway uh, relatively quickly through that read range, and I'll pick up most of those tags or all of those tags. The thing that affects that a lot is the environment as well as the antennas that you're using. If you're using a lower gain antenna, you may not get a good read range. If you're using different tags, you won't get as good read range or you get better range. Uh, generally, you can consider the larger the tag, the better the read range. But you want to play with those variables when you're setting up your RFID or testing your RFID system. You want to take a look at the size of the tag because there are many, many different types of tags you can use. Uh, and then the antennas that you're mounting to the um, to the, uh, to the hallway, if that's what you're setting up, or things like that. If you have particular uh, setups, please reach out to us here at PTS because we can get you our best practices and, and give you some guidance in the antennas to choose, as well as the tags to select for your environment. But it's something that you definitely have to test. If you have a wider hallway, you're going to want either maybe a bigger tag or more powerful antenna um, in order to read all those tags and, and get a good re uh, read performance back to your database. Um, so you want to do a lot of testing there to see what's an acceptable distance away from the antennas that you uh, you will see in your environment. Um, you can't really say the distance in feet. That's, there's too many variables to say how far that's going to be. What you want to do is, is try different tags, try different readers until you get something that's acceptable for your environment. Question here, hi, can one antenna be uh, set up for check-in, check-out if the layout of the warehouse does not allow for multiple antennas? Um, and there is also another question here, is the antenna, is there an antenna that itself knows uh, what way the tag is going? Two kind of directionality type questions. <clears throat> this is a tough question because you can, there are technical ways of determining direction in front of antenna. They're not perfect, though. You can do things like detect phase and do calculations on, on uh, the return signal strength of that, um, that tag as it's passing the field of view of the antenna to try and calculate direction. Typically, typically if that's done, it's also reported with or you calculate the confidence level that you um, have in that direction that's reported. It can also be greatly affected by um, the uh, environment. If you if the tag is bouncing around a lot, you're going to get a if the RF waves are bouncing around a lot. You may not get the calculations required for signal strength and things like that to try and determine direction. Some of the manufacturers, I know Zebra is one of them. They can report direction based on two antennas in a single read, whereby they the the reader at a hardware level will record the first antenna that saw the tag. It will record the uh, last antenna that recorded the tag, and then calculate the differences in those RSSI values as it's uh, traversing past the two antennas. But in that case, it still is requiring two antennas. So in most of our testing, we've seen two antennas is the most reliable for t determining directionality. Um, there are ways to do it with a single antenna, um, but in our testing, and what we've seen is two antennas are important. Um, there are, if you want to reach out to us for further information, there are different types of portal setups that you can put around a portal that may not require or doesn't require the walls like you saw in, in my situation here where I have those antennas just mounted to the wall and you're in a hallway. There are portals that you can put around the antenna with angled antennas so that you can try to record directionality that way. Uh, that's something if you'd like to reach out to us, uh, also we can get you more information on that. Uh, and uh, what may be required for in installation using uh, like free freestanding portals. Um, okay, I have a question here on. Um, 
I guess a customer of ours that's actually implemented something along these lines uh, for check-in, check-out at a library management system. Um, and they are asking what time frame are we going to uh, incorporate the badge scanning. That is actually what uh, they need. Um, well, the badge scanning, as I mentioned today, with the filtering, I don't know if um, that's what you're referring to, but that is available now. I mean, you can go ahead and set up a separate sync process for the same reader and post those badge scans to a separate table that's capturing badge scans as opposed to the item scan table uh, that's capturing the items. That's currently available. Uh, as far as the other feature that I was talking about, I don't have a time frame on that. We are currently working on an update to Clearstream with some new features, some cool new features that we will be uh, sending out to everyone um, for a uh, sneak peek on that in the future for a uh, webinar. So you keep, keep an eye out for that. Um, but once that, once that webinar comes out, we probably will have a better time frame for the next release of Clearstream. Um, I know that is one of the features that is not uh, definitely going to be in the next release, but it's a feature that we're considering. If it's something that you need or require for your current installation, definitely reach out to us. That could push that feature up in our list, or we could take a look at maybe what other options we may have. So um, definitely once I have the contact information up here, just uh, reach out to us and we can uh, um, get you that information. Uh, I have someone here that's saying, I think there is a module available for QuickBooks dealing with RFID. I'm not aware of any RFID uh, modules um, that are available with QuickBooks. Uh, there probably are some third-party tools for that. Um, I'm just not aware of uh, what may be available there. Do we have any other questions? I'm trying to scroll through here and see if I got them all. A question here, I don't think I answered this one. How to get the readers to go back online if I have to restart the readers? Um, I don't know if, uh, there is one situation where readers will turn off on you and that's in the demo mode. I, I don't know if that could possibly be your uh, situation. If you're in demo mode, they actually shut off after a time frame, but it's not a very long time frame. So if they're shutting off, um, you know, hours from when after they're started, that wouldn't be the case. But demo mode does limit the time frame that the readers will be powered on. I don't know if that answers or helps your question at all. Okay. Um, any other questions? I apologize if I missed some here. We should have done a lot. Okay, uh, send your questions over. If I missed anything, please just follow up uh, with it. Um, I just marked everything there that's been answered. But, uh, let me bring the PowerPoint back up. <laughs> okay, uh, here is our contact information. Please feel free to keep the questions coming if you have any more for the last couple of seconds here. Um, but as always, I encourage everyone to take a look at clearstreamrfid.com and download and trial the software. Uh, that will probably be, give you a better idea than what, what I showed you here today um, with how everything works and how it will work in your environment. Uh, there is also an emulator available in Clearstream, so you don't need any hardware if you'd like to even trial the stuff that we had done today, um, although hardware is always the best to get the best idea of how the read performance is going to be uh, working in your environment. Uh, but here's our contact information. If you guys have any other questions or any feedback on the webinars, uh, things you'd like to see in the future, please definitely reach out to us. Um, also, anybody that had requests today at the webinar, I'll try to get that sent over to you uh, as soon as I can or have somebody contact you with the information you need. Uh, but as always, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again on future webinars. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.